Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 18th of February 2019 and the time has just gone 9.05 GMT. Uh, it's been a fairly slow start to the European session here. Uh, we have seen a bit of a downward move on the FTSE, the DAX and the CAC. But keep in mind we had a very strong finish to European and US equities on Friday and Asian equity markets put in a solid performance overnight. But we are seeing a bit of a move to the downside, uh, a, bit of a, a bit of profit taking. And there is con continued uncertainty over the growth rates in Europe. Uh, we've heard from the French central banker, Mr. Viteroy, uh, who stated that the next move by the European Central Bank in relation to interest rates all hinges on the economic indicators that come out of, uh, of, of the Eurozone. We already know from last week that Italy is in recession and Germany just about to avoid a recession. And broadly speaking, we've seen some fairly poor economic indicators of the Eurozone in terms of services and manufacturing from all the major countries, Germany, France, Italy, Spain. So there are questions about this. Uh, at the back end of last week, uh, we even heard uh, a member of the European Central Bank suggest we could have additional targeted liquidity from the European Central Bank, which, uh, which helped every markets rally on Friday. But if, it's, if the European Central Bank are even talking of, about or contemplating additional targeted liquidity, it would suggest that there's a problem there there is a problem there to begin with. So we've seen equity markets in Europe, or most of them, or uh, most of the major ones, drift a small bit lower today. Um, it's been a fairly quiet day in terms of economic news. Overnight, we've heard from Right Move, and they stated in February that uh, average UK house asking, asking pr prices for houses increased by 0.2% on, on, uh, on a year-on-year -year basis. And that's just the slowest annual growth rate uh, since 2009. Um, the British house property market has been cooling a small bit and given that we're only a number of weeks away from the UK's departure from the European Union and there's no real kind of clarity in that, that, that situation, it's hardly a surprise that we're seeing house prices taper off. Um, today is President's Day over in the United States of America so US markets will be out of, will, 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 will remain closed. So it's likely going to be the case that we're going to have low, low, low trading volumes and low, and low volatility here in Europe. Um, US-Chinese trade talks are going to continue this week. Um, there was progress made in Beijing last week. The, the trade talks will continue in Washington this week. And just the very fact that the trade talks are actually moving to continuing um, is actually seen as a positive. Um, the rhetoric, we haven't really heard a whole lot from either side in relation to how the talks are going, but the little information we have heard, heard seems to be positive. And given that the rhetoric has certainly dialed down in comparison to what we heard in the kind of middle and the back, and the back end of 2018, traders are seeing it, are taking it as a positive sign. Uh, I'll take a look now uh, at some of the major markets and um, see what, see what the, um, the, the, the price action is doing. We can see here um, that the FTSE 100 has continued to make a decent recovery since late December. It's been kind of quite a common theme, global equity markets bouncing back since late December. And we can see here that on Friday, uh, the FTSE 100 pushed up to a level not seen since October. So it gives indication of how, 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 um, how strong the, the recent bullish move has been, that if we're printing multi-month highs on the FTSE 100. And what's of particular importance is that we're up in around, uh, we're currently trading at 7,212, and the 7,220 area actually to be, uh, proved to be a very important uh, metric or level uh, in September, October last year, and we're there, thereabouts at that metric. We're also not too far away from this red line here, the 200 moving average, which, which comes into play at 7,000, just north of 7,300. So if you can hold above 7,220, and if you can get a, if you can close above that and continue to build on that, we could be looking at targeting um, the kind of 7,300 region. Even if you do have a, a drift lower and move to the downside, support might come into play in around this area here, in around the um, 7,000 mark. Uh, we can see here that acted as both resistance and support um, back in early February. So if we do see any moves to the downside. I'll uh, keep an eye out for the psychologically important 7,000 metric. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany, similar situation in the, on the German market. 
whereby we've had a decent recovery since late December. But notice how um, notice how the DAX is hovering around this this area, this line here, the 130 moving average, which comes into play at 11,280. We can see that we're just about holding above that line for the time being. We can see that a previously acted resistance uh, at the beginning of the month, and we now could potentially acting as support. If we can hold above that metric, and we look to press on higher from here, we could look to run into this trend line here, which comes into play just shy of 11,400, around 11,390. And that trend line comes from this point here, where if you draw a line between the highs of June through July, and also September. Now, granted, it, it, it did manage to trade above it in September. But if you do, if you do draw that trend line, which previously acted at resistance in the past, that may act at resistance in the near term. So we could be looking at targeting 11,390 or 400. And if we go beyond that, and then keep an eye out for this region here, uh, 11,690. Uh, we can see that acted as resistance on a number of occasions at the back end of last year. So it may act at resistance again in the near term. If the market does manage to turn over on itself again, if it does uh, in the near term, support might come into play in around the 11,000 mark. It's a big psychological number, but it also did act as support on a few occasions in the last month or so. Take a look now at what's going on over on the S&P 500 in the US. Uh, the US markets are in are in better shape than their than their European counterparts. And as we can see here, like with the European counterparts, the US markets have been making a very impressive recovery since late December. The S&P 500 has managed to um, pull back above the, the, um, the, the trend line here and it's acting as trying to support yet again. We've actually managed to trade above and close above and hold above this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play of 2,747. We're uh, well above that at the moment. And while we remain north of that metric, the 200-day moving average, it's likely that we're going to see further gains from here. Uh, the big area to keep an eye for on the S&P 500 is this region here. Uh, it comes to play in around 2,815, 17, 20. We can see on a number of occasions back in October, November, and December, that metric in around 2,815 or 20, that acts as resistance on a number of occasions, so that's going to be the big area to keep an eye out for. If you can manage to trade above it, hold above it, it could potentially act as support before you can look to press on higher and look to go north of 2,900. If the, uh, the S&P does manage to pull back a bit, we could potentially see uh, the 200 moving average, uh, 2,749, or maybe uh, act as support, or perhaps even as low as for the, the, this trend line, which comes into play uh, just south 2700 so we can see here that this trend line you can get the trend line by drawing the lows from february 2016 through november 2016 you get this trend line here and uh, we can see it was well respected and acted as support in october and november last year and then once it broke below it in december it traded aggressively below it and then a few occasions it acted as resistance uh, in the new year and then it's managed to act as support again so it could potentially act as support again should we see a move to the downside on the S&P 500. Uh, let's take a look now at the Dow Jones. Similar move in the Dow Jones, whereby the Dow Jones has had a very impressive bounce back from late December. It's managed to push higher. It traded, hold, it's traded above and hold, has held held above its 200 moving average, which comes into play at north just north of 25,000 uh, 25,067 we're well above that at the moment we're up around uh, 25 25,865 we're well above that at the moment the next big area to keep an eye out for beyond here will be say 26,000 a big psychological number and if you go beyond that the late October high of 26,278 and then if you go beyond that it, it could be approaching the psychologically important 27,000 metric if you do see a move to the downside in the Dow Jones, support might come into play from this red line here, the 200 moving average, which you come into play just north of 25,000. Uh, one of the tenets of the Dow theory is that the stock market averages must confirm each other. And as you saw in the last chart, the S&P 500 was, was above its uh, trend line support. And if you draw a trend line on the Dow Jones, if you draw it from the lows of 
February 2018 to the lows of April and May 2018. We get this trend line along here. And similar to the S&P, um, whereby the market was respected in October and November, and then it traded aggressively below it in December, but managed to act as resistance initially, but then act as support again. And while both the stock market uh, stock markets are above their respective trend lines, we can be more confident that that, that that upward move is going to remain is going to remain intact. So even if you're trading the S&P 500 only, it's a good idea to keep an eye on the Dow Jones and vice versa. But if both stock markets fall back below the respective trend lines, we can become more confident that the downward trend is going to uh, is going to, is going to uh, kick in again. Take a look now at what's going on on the gold market. So gold began its bounce back in August, and really since about mid-November, we've seen a nice uh, kind of a more aggressive move to the upside, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows, so classic example of an upward trend. The gold market ran out of steam in around the, at the um, ran, ran, ran out of steam rather, um, ran into resistance uh, at around 13.26. We're not too far away from it at the moment, so we're you know, approaching that level again. A break above 13.26. Might, might, might bring this area into play at 13.35, and then if you go beyond that, 13.50, and then potentially up to 13.66. Any move to the downside in gold may find support coming to play in around the kind of 1300, 12.98 mark, and then a move below that could see support coming to play in around the 12.77, 12.76 area. Take a look now at what's going on on the oil markets, starting off with Brent crude. So the oil market, like equities, made a decent bounce back in late December. Um, it managed to kind of trade sideways for a bit throughout January, but we are creeping hard yet again. And we have recently been hitting levels not seen uh, since mid-November. So we are back to you know, hitting multi-month highs for the oil market. It's kind of getting there slowly but surely. Taking a look at the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator, we can see that that's there's a steady increase in positive momentum. So the upward move in the underlying oil market is being confirmed by the increase in positive momentum. So for the time being, the bulls are in control. If the market does continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here at a 68 spot 36, the mid-November high. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 70 bucks per barrel. Uh, any moves to the downside in Brent may find some support from this line here. Comes into play in a 63 spot 35. And a move below that might bring in the psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel into play. It's a similar situation for WTI. I'll take a look at uh, West Texas Intermediate at the moment. So we've seen the bounce back from, um, from late December. The market managed to trade sideways for a number of weeks uh, in, a bit in January and February. But once again, we face multi-month highs, levels not seen since mid-November. The market's creeping higher. There's an increase in positive momentum on the MACD indicator. Uh, and if we do look to press higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around the $58, $58.10. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the psychologically important 60 bucks a barrel. Any moves to the downside may get some support from this blue line here, which is just north, uh, which is just below $51 a barrel, or if you go below that, uh, it might come in, support might get, come into play at the $50 per barrel uh, mark. It's a big psychological number, and it's a, it's a price action, a price and area that our traders will, will be keeping an eye on. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So broadly speaking, since, um, since, since um, uh, mid-January, it's broadly been pushing to the downside, a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. Now, granted, we are a bit higher today, but the trend for the last number of weeks has been to the downside. And if you look to press a lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in at one spot, 12.16. Uh, and, of course, a break below that could, could then point us towards 111, 110. Any move to the upside could run into resistance in around the kind of 114, 115 area. Like I said at the uh, at the top of the video, it was suggested by a member of the European Central Bank that the ECB could go down the route of uh, potentially using targeted liquidity, which would be a form of which would be, which would be a form of loose monetary policy, and that's why we're seeing pressure on the single currency. Not to mention we've had disappointing economic indicators of the eurozone 
uh, in, re in recent weeks. Take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. So sterling has seen a fairly aggressive sell-off uh, since since kind of you know, latest January. It's been pushing to the downside. And if you look to con continue this downward move, we could be looking at heading back down towards one spot 2710, one, 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 uh, Any bounce back in uh, in pound dollar make some resistance may come into play in around the kind of 130 mark, which coincides with this red line here, the 20 moving average. And notice how the 30 moving average acted as fairly decent support on a number of occasions in late January, early February. But once the market traded below it, it then began to act as resistance. So between the 30 the moving average coinciding, <coughs> excuse me, co um, coinciding with the kind of psychologically important one spot 30 mark, kind of you know adds weight to the argument that, that that's a level that traders are going to be keeping an eye on for. Um, so take a quick look now at the week ahead, and the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you'll find most of the articles by myself and the other analyst, um, and the other analysts post our articles too. The week ahead, um, we can see here that tomorrow we have uh, UK unemployment and average earnings. On Wednesday, we have fourth quarter numbers from Walmart. I'm sorry, I apologize. On Tuesday, tomorrow, we have fourth quarter numbers from Walmart. On Wednesday, we have fourth quarter figures from the Cheesecake Factory over in the US. On Wednesday, we have the Federal Reserve minutes. These are the minutes from the January meeting when rates were left on hold. So those minutes will, will be released on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we have full year figures from both Lloyds and Barclays, um, um, the, obviously the big, the big British banks. Keep in mind, last Friday we heard we, we heard from Royal Bank of Scotland who, by and large, had fairly positive numbers. On Thursday, we have the flash PMI reports from Germany and France. This is going to be of fairly big importance because um, one French central banker stated that the next move by the European Central Bank will depend on the economic indicators and the, and the economic health of the region. So these, these figures are going to be of fairly big importance. And lastly, on Thursday, we also have fourth quarter figures from Dropbox. Um, some of the articles that we do get posted to the actual website. Others get posted to Insights. And Insight is, a, is a, on our trading platform. It can be found under on the Market Pulse tab, second option down. So keep an eye out for Insights on our trading platform. The economic releases that, could, that, are, that get announced throughout the, throughout the day will get posted to Insights. Some of the articles that we, get, that we write will get posted to Insights as well. And it's also worth pointing out, keep an eye out for Chart Forum. Chart Forum is, a, is it's open to everybody with a CMC Markets account, whereby you can take a screenshot of a particular chart and just write some kind of short commentary on what you think the price action is going to do. Myself and the other analysts um, regularly contribute to this section, and it, it can be found under the, uh, under the, under the um, Market Pulse tab. Lastly, um, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.